welcome back to the belt here in belt colony yeah today's episode is sponsored by the makers of belt colony as we take our third look at this game after unlocking a ship and an extractor and a lot more so check it out with the links down below in the description a uh, quote unquote open world mining simulator except you know we're on an asteroid but or a belt hence we're making a belt colony Last time over there, we built ourselves a big O extractor and unlocked this big O ship, which is pretty sweet so far. We have ourselves a lot more capacity for being able to store our ore and transport it around. And now, of course, that we've got an auto extractor, we can buy a bunch more of these with our credits in the upper right and go find other resources. Now, I've forgotten what we've exactly mined here, but uh, it's definitely important to uh, check from time to time to see what might be here. And uh, hopefully we have ourselves some ore that we can pick up. Not sure if we have to do it manually or whatnot, but still pretty cool. Looks like there's a control panel there. Ah, yeah, we can interact with that with R. Ah, there we go. Oh, cool, okay. So we can see here, oh, that we can transport things via drones. So that's going to probably be the next thing that we buy is a drone system in order to get all of our miners to automatically mine and then drones to automatically bring them back to the base. Otherwise, we can transport to the ship if it's close enough, but it's just basically... Uh, what, two units of silicate ore? Eh, we may as well grab it. All right, cool. So we'll come back later and check this one out. I think it'll be marked on our map, too, so we should be able to come back anytime uh, to check out what might be here. But now the next goal is probably drones, right? So let's go ahead and zip and rip and dip and go find out where to go next. All right, I think we're going to RTB then and see if we can find our way home, which should be around here somewhere. Oh. Is that another mining location? Hmm. It looks like that little flat rock up there is about the same as the one at the bottom. So we might be able to find ourselves multiple um, mining locations. Not bad. All right, let's go ahead and proceed to base, which is this way, 700 meters. Let's rip and dip. Oh, you can see our shadow. Sweet. Spaceship looks real cool. All right. Now we're traveling at, like, maximum velocity. Cool. So, yeah, we get a jetpack in this game. We get ourselves a spaceship in this game. They both kind of operate the same in terms of their controls. And we're reaching, like, maximum altitude. Space flight mode. Oh, no way. We can actually leave the asteroid and go to different locations. Oh. -ho. Old shift to use vertical and sideways thrusters. Oh, wow, we can leave the asteroid and go to other planets slash uh, meteorites. Fly towards a distant waypoint to activate the long-distance drive. No way. I don't know if I'm ready for this yet, but this is a great way now to travel around the uh, asteroids and stuff. So, it is quite possible to mine this asteroid and go to many other asteroids in the belt. Very cool. All right, we're gathering up speed here to go back. What happens if we arrive at a destination? So we're arriving. Oh, wow, we're, we're like at maximum speed. <laughs> All right, so we would have died, basically. Uh, there's no, like, switch between the uh, the atmospheres or something like that. So it works like how you would expect, where uh, I was thinking that perhaps the game would consider there to be, like, a quote-unquote atmosphere around this uh, little asteroid where it would make it work differently. But it looks like it would work as you'd expect. Coming in hot means that you're going to crash, which is kind of cool. That's kind of what you want. All right, let's go back to our base, though. I want to buy some new stuff. All right. Cool. Wow. So I wonder how it's going to work if we have one base set up here. There's also, of course, tubes and other things that can transport us across the planet. So, you know, we can we can basically make a massive base that stretches out across the entire asteroid. And then we can, of course, connect those with multiple bases at each belt. Then maybe perhaps connect those with drones. Possibly. All right, well, let's come in for a landing. 
Cool. There we go. Cool. Nice. I like it. All right. So I guess our conclusion here for this spaceship is basically that we can go to other asteroids and then we can build multiple bases, connect those bases to other areas of operation, such as smelters and miners and uh, fabricators, and then use the spaceship to get between things to possibly either sell in one location, which is here, or possibly from the other bases too. So we might still have to do some manual trucking, but there is definitely some automation, which is cool. All right, so there's some drop off there. Whenever we bring the ship back, it should be automatic, but let's go ahead and check our prices and whatnot. I wanna zip in here. There we go. Ah, back into first person. It'll be kind of cool if we could build like a, I don't know, a space base, like a, you know, actually in orbit and build something that can smelt and fabricate and do other things like that, but in orbit. That'd be really cool. All right, let's go ahead and sell all ore. Cool. All right, we can get some more upgrades. What do we got next? Station upgrade, expand with a second floor for 20,000. A spaceship, the carry-all, which we have now. A carry-all upgrade, increase thrust and speed by 20%. Yeah, when I was driving that thing, so we can't really adjust the pitch when we're uh, in the, the, like, asteroid mode or hover mode. We have to actually go out to space in order to adjust, like, pitch and roll. So when we're here, it kind of just makes its bottom parallel to the planet. So it's always kind of at an angle where it's hugging the planet. Uh, but if we want to go away from that, we just go high enough by just using thrust. Uh, what else do we have? Another ore extractor for 10,000. Those are going to be real expensive. Volatiles extractor. Oh, yeah, we can uh, mine, like, gases and maybe li maybe liquids, possibly. But unlikely for that. A drone pad for 15,000. Buy and operate drones for transport. Ah, so that's going to be our goal today is to try to get a drone pad and then try to get enough um, money for more drones, more than likely. But that might require power, so our power is at 38%. I'm not sure if that's total usage or total power remaining. I'm gonna say it's power remaining because our food and water is also getting low. So we'll have to buy that. Uh, let's see, we got multiple storage, or rather solar panels. We have storage here at a storage tank. That might be for the volatiles. Um, a greenhouse so we can produce our own food. Expand the greenhouse upgrade the greenhouse we have a metal refinery a composite refinery and we can also move buildings for 5,000 okay so we can expand upon the outside of the base so what we've mostly been focused on is vehicles and mining and suit upgrades so we can carry more stuff which is pretty good if we're going to do things manually oh boy going to be kind of spendy for these credits to upgrade stuff but let's do 98 and 93 there and then power we should be good on and everything, of course, gets delivered via drones. So this is our DoorDash in space. Must be an expensive delivery for sure. Well, to be fair, we spent almost like over two, uh, almost 2,000 on it. So that's cool. Delivery complete. All right, well, that was a good meal. Let's get out and go uh, on another adventure. So if we're going to be able to make some more extractors, we need to earn some more money in order to do that. And the extractors are very good, it seems, at being able to mine a particular resource. So right now we're mining silicate. So if we can find a gold mine or something that's high in demand, then we can make a lot more money. I love how the ship is like slightly blue. I think that's cool. Hopefully we can get some paint jobs on it. I didn't see that when I bought it, but it would be cool to get different skins, paint colors, uh, everything different colors. Actually, the stuff in the base would be cool to paint different colors as well. And ourselves. All right, let's go cruise around a little bit. We'll try to find some surface mines. There should be a light on this thing, isn't there? Pretty sure. What are the controls? Uh, I don't even know. Uh, hmm. Oh, well, we'll keep trucking. I'll figure it out. Uh, now, when we get close to a resource that we can use... There should be an indication on the map that there's something that we can mine. But I'm thinking this is going to be the gameplay loop for now where we have to go out and find different types of uh, 
well, basically deposits to continuously bring back manually to then continuously build extractors and then we can start mining and then we'll have kind of an automatic base income and that automatic income is going to be used for more than likely food and water and then upgrading power to then upgrade the base and uh, I don't think we'll need drones for that at the start um, we're back in space flight mode but actually this is a good idea because we can get away from the uh, the base a little bit but you know what How long is it going to take us to get here? Uh, New Haven. What is this? Some sort of a... Oh, boy. I think we might want to upgrade our ship. It's going to take forever to get there. I guess it's some sort of space station. Maybe. Wow, look at that asteroid, man. We'd see another one over there. It's going to take a while. All right. Here we are. Back at the planet. We can get a little closer. We're hauling. A little closer. A lot closer. There we go. We're getting closer to it now. So if we go to space, without upgrades, it's going to be quite tedious. So even though we have the option to go there now, it might not be in our best interest at the moment. It might take a little too long. All right, let's look around for more surface deposits. So New Haven is marked, and it must be a station because the other asteroid nearest to us is not marked, which leads me to believe that we could probably travel there, but it would be nice to mark it with some sort of a beacon to know that that's what's there, where it is, and where perhaps exactly on that planet, or, or rather asteroid, that we might be able to build a base. Still cruising and perusing. Honestly, it's quite nice to be out on patrol. This music has gotten better, too. I think they've added a few more tracks to it. Uh, so it's not as uh, repetitive with the songs. Only a few songs, but this is also the type of game where you can always mute it as we're playing a little bit of Space Trucker. And that's what's cool about these types of games is that, you know, when we uh, are going out and looking for stuff, once we establish a supply line and it becomes a little second nature to be able to haul stuff back and forth, you just throw on, like, Shoot to Thrill as you're hauling stuff back and forth. I also believe this game supports a joystick and also controller. Uh, so if you want to control uh, the ship itself, seems to be a little better when it's in space, obviously. Because right now it's kind of in hover mode, surface mode, to where we just kind of coast. But yeah, there you go. Alright, so T for lights. Looks like there could be a deposit there, but... We would see that if we were this close by now. I think I did a good job of already clearing out most of the surface deposits here. Not really seeing much more. I would really like the ability to remove the surface 
and mine uh, e extract ore underneath the surface of the planet. That'd be quite a good detail, actually. But boy, would that be tricky and real messy. Hmm. Wow, I can't believe how much I've actually removed materials from the surface already. And we're kind of heading back towards our base, too, so... It's probably less and less likely that we'll find anything. Alright, well, there's the other asteroid. Let's go see it. Unfortunately, no real way to tell how close we are to that. Well, let's go give it a shot. All right, space flight mode, cool. So now we just need to uh, keep an eye on that little dot, or that little circle that shows basically where we're aiming on our velocity and whatnot. Wow, this isn't that far at all. I will right, we'll do like 82. Hopefully we don't get pulled over uh, for speeding or anything like that. Okay, well we've never been here before. I wasn't even aware that there was a asteroid this close to us, let alone that we could free fly to any sort of um, other location, which does make this kind of an open world game, an open world mining survival simulator with colony building on all sorts of different uh, asteroids, which is cool. So long as we can do that, and I hope that's what we can do. Coming in hot, boys. <laughs> nice. Hey, we got a Steam achievement for this, too. Nearby Asteroid. Cool. So when we have the spacesuit, it actually prevents you from leaving. So you do need the ship to do this. But we'll just keep peeking around a little bit. See how different this is from the other one. It'd be interesting if there were different properties here with different types of uh, damage or large uh, landmarks of some sort. And there comes the sun. got like nothing here. And there's our controls. No ability to scan it seems. Hmm. Well, let's touch down on the uh, first new asteroid, shall we? Seems like there's a pretty well thought out auto landing mode too when you get close to the, uh, wow look at that, that looks sweet. When you get close to the surface of a, well of the surface, <laughs> then it'll just auto set down slowly if you stop moving. That's helpful. An auto park mode? Hell yeah, we just need a backup camera. Ah, here we go. Finally, some ore. What else we got? Anything else? Doesn't look like it. All right, what do we got here? Silicate. Oh, more silicate, of course. So now that we've got our spaceship and our backpack, we can haul quite a bit before we go back. And then we can also go back to the um, extractor. We can see that at about five uh, kilometers away over there. Somewhere over there. Hmm. 
Is that all we got? Come on, broski. Well, it's going to be a fun long grind of being able to get all the materials we need for drones. And I do hope they can go to this planet. I'm going to just call, call them planets because they feel like we're in a whole different place. And they're round like planets, too. I imagine an asteroid kind of being more like oblong, like looking like a hockey puck or like a, an American football. But these are kind of like nice and round, like they could have actually supported an ocean or something. Cool, we dropped off five units. Nice. Yeah, this is chill. Boom. Bah, bah. Look at the little atmosphere here, like some dust that we kicked up from probably zipping around in our spacesuit. At least it looks like it. Bah, bah, bah. Bah, bah. Wow, we do have to get quite close to resources. But really, there's no way to tell that there's anything here. I went to where I saw a lot of uh, little rocks. Because that that looks the most promising, but literally you can just find deposits anywhere. Where there's just random... Actually, there's like a little tiny dip or something, and that's it. A little bump in the road. I guess that's all it takes. Now, some of the times, if the rock is large enough, if you recall from our previous episodes, this, our space guy, will actually get out a little laser, and right now he's gathering things by hand and putting them in his backpack, but other times he'll fire off like a space laser and mine stuff that way, and that's really cool. Those, you know, frickin' lasers. Anything up here? I think we'll just orbit our ship a little bit and see if there's any sort of area to extract a large number of ore. We gotta find a lot more though. I wanna build a second extractor and then start working those two kinda next to each other. I think there might be two areas to mine with the auto extractor and then start buying uh, drones. Oh, there's some. Well, I gotta get really close. We need like a some sort of a scanner. Like, look at how close we have to get. That's why I was going kind of slow and low with the spaceship. All right. It doesn't even seem to mark where our spaceship is. Is it on the compass? Ah, oh, it's over there. I see. Cool, hydrocarbon, nice. And there was something over here. I think hydrocarbon might sell for the most, even more than gold. But we do have, you know, copper, gold, magnesium, hydrocarbon. Yeah, there's copper, yep. All right, let's rip, zip, and dip back to the old ship. Oh, wait a minute. There was more. It's hard to go slow and fast at the same time. Like, you want to go fast to cover a vast amount of area, but then you got to go slow so you can stop to find it once you get a marker. Uh, backpack might be full too, so let's see. Now yeah, we got a little bit more space. Nice. I think this will be the last we can carry. Maybe. Alright, so we gotta go this way. Wow, we're about like a half a kilometer away.
but it's good to scout it out. So I do wish there was a way to maybe save coordinates for what we find. It would be kind of cool to be able to scout an area, locate all the ore, and then come down with the ship into the middle of all that, and then just kind of hop out and manually mine everything, and then bring it back to the ship and then pull out. There we go. 15 units of ore. Look at that. All right, I think we're going to head home. And see how much we can get for this. And maybe swing by our extractor. Let's do that. Let's swing by the extractor and see how much money we made. Or rather, ore that we've extracted. And then we'll go home and see how much money we made. Wow. Every time we play, we discover something completely new. I love it. Is this a McDonald's? I'm loving it. Hmm. There we go. There we go. Nice. Coming in hot. Now I don't see the marker for the extractor anymore. Man, New Haven must be something cool. I want to get out there. But I guess uh, 5.8M is probably a million kilometers. That's going to take a minute without upgrades. Alright, so our extractor is over here. We'll go find this. And let's do a little pickup. So, I don't know, it's been about a half hour at this point. Let's see what we got. I want a rover, actually. One thing I didn't think about is how cool it would be to use this spaceship to pick up a rover and, like, drop it off on another planet and then drive around. That might even be more beneficial than the spaceship. Now, of course, this is more versatile, being able to just take off at any moment. There's some uh, ore there. Let's go get it. But yeah, this is kind of cool that we can, you know, use this thing to hover pretty quickly, but a truck, I think, would be more fun, ripping and dipping. There we go. Now, let's grab some more ore. Hopefully it's something good. Oh, good, and we get to use the laser, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Always a monumental occasion when we get that. Yeah. Wow, platinum ore, he said. All right, so platinum must be big. I want to upgrade the ship so we can get a bigger detection range on any sort of ore. We got a little bit in the backpack, but the fact that it's platinum is good. All right, let's head back. Cool. Actually, the extractor is right over there, so. Wow. This is where we began the episode, and we were only a little bit away from that platinum and couldn't even see it. That's crazy. All right, there's our control panel. Oh, we got 15 units of silicon ore. No spaceship nearby. Okay, well, we can carry that. Ah, and it looks like we actually have to assign drones here. So each drone hub might be able to have four drones. 
I hope we can actually assign from the drone hub, otherwise we're going to have to follow, uh, fly to every single one of these um, extractors and then have the drone like follow us here or something, or like learn the location via GPS. I hope we don't have to go to the extractor market for, you know, mining. Now I want to see if there's a place up here we can extract. I'm fairly sure this little flat section allows us to mine. Yep. Wait, I don't know. Well, I'm pretty sure this can be mined. And this is like a little freebie right here. Backpack's full? Damn. Oh well. Now, it's entirely possible that every time that we go back to base, uh, maybe the game reloads ore and stuff on the surface because it's quite possible that, you know, other bodies could actually be hitting the uh, surface here and could be giving us a ton of uh, new resources. They could be renewed every so often, like the ocean washing things up on shore. So it's pretty cool, or a pretty cool opportunity to be able to do that if that's how it's working. Uh, but the idea, I think, to go to multiple asteroids would be that the surface deposits that we can extract by building the extractors are limited. So if we found 10 here and 15 on the next one and 5 on one after that, could all be entirely randomized as to whether or not it's platinum or whether or not the further we go, the more rare and worthwhile the riches are as we explore. All right, RTB. All right, 300 meters away from base. Well, about 350 now. Mm, feels good. Coming home. I want to be able to customize those landing lights. They're cool. Yeah, close enough. Wow, 39 units of ore transferred to the base. Very nice. And the cool thing is, is whenever we get in the ship, it transports uh, all that automatically to the ship. So we don't really have to stop at the ore drop-off to do that. As I recall now. Ah, uh, yeah. The nice design, too, of the base really reminds me of... It's like... I feel like it's two-thirds Star uh, Wars and one-third Star Trek a little bit. Especially with how the panels look like that. I like it. Alright, food and water are low, but let's sell our ore. Magnesium ore, one unit per 100. Wow, 20,000 credits. I can't believe it. We did it. I can't believe it was worth that much. Uh, an ore extractor is uh, 10,000, but I want to buy a drone pad and see how it goes. Purchased. All right. We might need to buy a solar panel as well, uh, but we'll see. All right, here it comes. We'll skip that cutscene. Let's go to the drone hub. Control. Oh. I don't think we can control that from there. Oh, cool. There's the drone hub next to the space uh, thingy. The space thingy. Yeah, our landing pad. Cool. All right. So it looks like we can control the drones from here. Yep. And there's the four little spots for them to like lock into and recharge, maybe even deliver. Or they deliver right to the um, ore deposit. Let's see. All right, cool. So we can buy four of them. They're 10,000 each. So we're going to need a lot more money. So we got to spend 20 on the pad, or 15 on the pad, and 10 on the uh, drone. So 
we need like 25,000 to start with the drones. Not bad though. Drone pad is functioning with normal parameters, zero functional drones. Okay. So my assumption is that these will just automatically drop off from the extractors. So I guess we can have one drone per extractor, but we can assign multiple ones, but I don't think we can assign multiple drones to multiple extractors. So we can have, I don't think we can have like drone one go to one, two, three, four. But it might be more optimal just to have one to one and observe how they operate, how quickly they uh, travel and how quickly they can transfer things. Interesting. Very nice indeed. Oh. All right, well, let's go inside for a little break. We need some food and water anyway. So let's go buy that. And then we can start thinking about things like the uh, greenhouse and possibly something to get water. I did see a greenhouse, but I'm not sure about the water yet. If there would be a way to get that. Let's see. Storage. We have a greenhouse. Greenhouse upgrades, metal refinery, composite, and move buildings. Hmm. I like it. This list is getting shorter as we're buying stuff. Another ore extractor is 10,000. Another upgrade for the ship. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. Increased thrust and speed by 20%, so another 5,000 for that. That ah, might be good for the spaceship, I suppose. Yeah, why not? And, of course, we can get a, another station upgrade here. So, uh, upgrade number two is to expand with the second floor. I wonder what that means, though. Like, that's cool and all, but... Does that allow us to A, build on top of the base? Is it an external expansion? Or B, is it more space inside? Which doesn't really affect anything for us at the moment. But let's upgrade the ship at least once. There we go. Cool. So now, for another 5,000, we can upgrade to 50% faster speed. Which is cool. Because we need that for going to the other asteroid faster. And eventually, going to that other base faster. That's just going to cost us a little bit more, I suppose. Oh yeah, they're dropping off the whip upgrades. Gonna have to get those installed over the weekend in the old garage. Very nice. Uh, we got like what I think is a shower here, some like a bunk bed and a TV. <laughs> Very nice. All right, guys. Well, that's it for another episode of Belt Colony. There's uh, three episodes on this one too. So if you want to see how we arrived at this uh, conclusion, I suppose, or this uh, current point in time, make sure you go back and check out those other videos. A lot of fun. Uh, first exploration, then buying our spaceship, and now having the ability to do some drones and having explored another asteroid. Quite cool. I hope to come back and do more Bell Colony in the future and might live stream it as well. So make sure you go ahead and smash that like button and let me know what you think down below in the comment section. How's your day going? What kind of games do you like the most? Um, and other open world space games that you think this one's pretty similar to. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye, buddy.